Welcome back. Poolside. As uh, we've never done before yet, we may always do again at this point. <laughs> Ruin now. Ruin. <laughs> I feel like it's gotta be this patio. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like you know, like when one time in your life, one time in your life, you hung out at your friend's house who had a pool when their parents were out of town at high school and you're like, It's so cool to hang out by the pool. Yeah. And then like the first time you went to a Vegas pool party and you went, Oh, yeah. This is a pool party. Yeah. Right? Like that's how I feel right now. We've done all these shows and all these places and all of a sudden he was like, Do you want to come out back? I was like, Yeah, man. We yeah. sat here and I was like, dude, it's a beautiful day outside. Having a cocktail and eating good cheese by the by the pool like this, I feel like I I feel like I upgraded. Yeah, and the Remy's kicking, what happened. Remy's kicking in too, so I just I'm slouching more <laughs> and more every time we come back from break. Huh? Where? You're like, I hope this thing leans in more. Yeah, yeah. Come on, get the microphone Jesus. closer. Testing, testing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tony's like, no, those are good. I know all about it. I love it, dude. I love it. I love it. So welcome back, man. Welcome back to everything, everything, every how. And uh, to hoping that we all die fat, drunk, and happy, dude. Absolutely. That's really what it's all about. Absolutely. In any way, shape, or form. I'm feeling fat, drunk, and happy right now. So, yeah, well, that's, that, I mean, uh, I mean, honestly, beautiful. I say that with, I say that with a very open heart and open mind. Like, I thought about it, and I, you know, and, you know, I'm a retired fat kid. I was like 350 at one point, had wow. gastric bypass surgery and all these things. And, and I think I've, I've been everything except ethnic. I've always been white, so I've never been <laughs> ethnic. Uh, so, uh, and I just say that just because I, that's the world I know. Yeah. Um, but I have been everything else. I, I never lost my penis, so I guess I wasn't that world. I, politically correct-wise, I have to involve more now than when I used to say this five years ago. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I've done a lot of things and been a lot of things and not tattooed, tattooed, big guy, small guy. And uh, in the end, uh, I don't think any of it really mattered, dude. Huh. I look at everybody's journey and everybody's thing and, you know, think, this, fuck, that's pretty cool, dude. You did you and yeah. you could still end up by a pool. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. Right. We all have a journey. Just enjoy it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and it, with that being said, as long as we all end up in a pile of poop. Yeah, absolutely. I think poops, this is not the first show where poop's been the through line. Yeah. It ends up happening. <laughs> Either blood and guts or poop ends up coming up, whether we like it or not. <laughs> no matter what, dude, no matter what. Uh, so, so this last thing, you, you actually do rep a product. Uh, yes. That is, that is amazing. So we're going to talk about that for a little bit, and then we're not trying to sell anybody on anything. I'm actually very happy of it. I took it out. My first week of sales, I said, oh, I'll take your stuff out, man, because I really like it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't cook with any of it because it's not my style. However, I used it to cover steaks and do things. I just don't mention that it's an Asian product. I just cook it and people say it's good. Yeah. And that's what I like about products is that when they don't have to be identified as something yeah. other than good. Well, we have to it's label okay. it. It's, it's Japanese, so it can only be used in Asian cuisine. That's so false. We can sneak it into sauces and marinades. and Just for, a tip. Just a little bit, just <laughs> to see how it feels. Come Absolutely. Now, man. How do you like that show you? I like just the tip. Just the tip. Just a little bit of that black garlic show you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Boy. Oh, I don't know why I think that's so funny, but that is fantastic. I like well, it. I got lucky. So went from chef to working at Chef's Warehouse Los Angeles. Right. Learned about food. Met a lot of the people that made the stuff that I used. So I used Y Imports product. I used Minus 8 product. I used Angel Salumi, Fermani. I get to meet these people. Hudson Valley. I got to go to the farm. I got to see the process. And then you start networking and building relationships. And then they say, well, you're really passionate about food. Why don't you help us sell our stuff? So I'm just moving up the supply chain further, closer to the source. And currently I'm helping out um, Dave and Wa Imports based in Chicago. And he's got really cool stuff. So, yeah. so before you get into that, I want to talk about Fwa for just a brief minute. Um, are you, uh, are you knowledgeable in what's going on in California with foie? Yeah. Yeah. It's a bummer. Yeah. It's, it's the biggest, to me, it's the biggest crock of shit on the planet. And I, and I say that with such an open, open hearted, open brained, whatever. And I, you know, I just, foie gras is, is my favorite, um, ingredient, not, not because of expense or anything else, because of uniqueness and story and history and, and because it makes everything better, I guess. Sure. I mean, really, honestly. Well, and how are you supposed to do that eating competition that I listened to on that podcast if you can't get foie? We have to go to Arizona. To go, you come out to Arizona, <laughs> we'll hang out with Scott still, brother. But, but he's down, just so you know. That yeah. guy is still down. He, he thinks he can eat a whole piece of, a whole quarter loaf of brioche with a whole lobe of cooked foie with a foie flat dumped onto it in a certain amount of time without eating or drinking and now that going to bathroom oh. half an hour after. Oh, oh, he'll be shitting really terrible things for a very long time. That's gonna be ugly. it's gonna be gross. But bro. I want to do it. We made it about poop again. Yeah, I called the shit. I called the poop shit. Whoops. 
But that's what I mean, though. Oh. That's, I mean, it's a real thing. He I, wants to do it. I, let's do it. We'll set it up. Come out to Arizona. We'll hang so, out. So what do you think about Californians? Do you think it's just because of the liberal whatever, whatever, whatever? And I love them for a lot of things. But for this thing, I don't. I think it's a lack of knowledge. I think the thing people are missing is that ducks force feed and store the fat in the liver to migrate south. And it's something that's been going on since the Egyptians. So, yeah, you're putting a tube down their throat and you're feeding them. And it is kind of startling to witness it. At the same time, the people feeding them do it from the time they're three or four days old, brought down. From well, Canada, and here's what and here's what it, ducks ducks are supposed. I mean, they're made to eat whole fish. They don't chew. They their don't throats have teeth. their throats are pliable, so they do expand without being hurt. They don't know the difference because they'll choke down rocks. You know, Jack Bencino right. he, will tell you stories about they eat all kinds of crazy stuff when they're in the wild. We've just created a a way to do it more efficiently to get the lobe to the premium uh, the optimum size to slaughter them for foie. But we're at the top of the food chain for a reason, okay? They, yeah, they're good. They, they use the whole animal, okay? Um, and the second you start telling people what they can and cannot do, it's a slippery slope. So you, you get this victory with foie, what's next? And I don't think we should be telling anybody what they should be doing with their own body. That's my thing. People don't have to agree with me. You can cut me apart on social media, whatever. I just think... You start, even some other manufacturers will say you're messing with interstate commerce. Yeah, but why? I, I, I don't know why they're doing it. I think it's silly. I don't agree with it. I remember when it was banned and then they lifted the band and we threw a party at the bazaar with Jose Andreas and Michael oh, Mataggio oh, and Dominique good. Cran and Matt Igo from Hudson Valley was yeah. there and Jack, and we had a blast. And there was like five people out front protesting. Five. That was it. You know, it was just some really old, powerful politician got a hold of this thing and was like a dog with a bone about, it. I'm going to make sure it's banned. I'm going to make sure it's banned. And it's not over. Uh, Matt, I go from Hudson Valley, their head sales guy reached out and was asking if I know Amar Santana and I connected those two. And I think Amar might be getting involved. I don't want to speak out of terms. I know that sure. I, I facilitated an intro because Amar is still serving it. He's pissed. You shouldn't be telling. I did. I, I yeah. Until the day I left Reckless, I had foie yeah. butter, foie dumplings, foie whatever. Who the fuck are you to tell us and what we can and cannot eat? I don't I tell V. I don't. I don't boycott vegans because they want to be vegan. I don't agree with it. I think it's dumb. Yeah, there's nobody protesting a vegan yeah, restaurant. Yeah, but if you want to be vegan, I leave you alone. So why the fuck can't you leave me alone if I want to eat meat? Why are we like the, the the what you put in your body police for other people? You can, fuck off. It's it's none of your business. If I want to if I want to eat foie, I'm not making you eat it. By the way. Banning it in California hasn't stopped the production. It's just hurting these companies, uh, you know, making money. I mean, Jack Jack would have stayed with Hudson Valley if they didn't ban it, but he had a, he lost a job. You know, right. like, you're, right, right. you're fucking with people's livelihood, man. Like, and I don't do that to you when you fucking, you know, eat granola all day. Leave me alone. I don't judge you. Don't judge us. So, so, so there's a yeah. difference. I do judge them. Well, yeah. That's I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah, that's okay. I judge the hell out of them. Yeah. I tell you straight out. Somebody tells me right now I don't eat pork, whether it's religious or whatever. That's cool. I'm glad you have a belief. That's not what I'm judging. What I'm judging is the fact that pork, uh, when that was made, is not produced in that same way. Pigs are filthy animals. Yeah. But if we all know that good, all good things come from poop, yeah. as we've discussed many times today, then, uh, then those are what those pigs are. And, the, and pigs are delicious beasts. And if you don't eat something that you haven't tried or something hasn't gone on, that's like you don't eat meat on the seventh day or you don't eat... Yeah. Whatever on the seventh day. Well, we have refrigerators now. It's still good on the seventh day. We don't only get meat when it comes in on Tuesday. We don't only do things. I mean, there's the world's changing. You can change these things. Yeah. And to tell us that uh, to, for you not to eat something because of your history, your belief, that's fine. But to not to eat something out of ignorance, I don't get well, it. Well, and Hudson Valley's argument was there were people out there doing shady stuff with how they treated the ducks. That did exist. It exists with produce or with meat or whatever. Well, that's why we just talked about organic. Yeah. We debunked it, right? I mean, their, that's, that's the truth. Like, their argument was don't ban it get everybody to execute it at the level we're doing it because which is fine we they were like oh bring a camera we're not trying to hide anything we're not beating up animals and treating them terribly and this is something that happens naturally in the wild and honestly i don't tell you how to eat don't fucking tell me it, 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 we, we've just turned into like the police of each other and it's just insanity to me and people suffered from this and it's sad because it's just it's just it's not like a ton of people eat it there's a lot of people who think it's gross if you don't like something, just don't do it. If you don't like eating something, just yeah, don't not, eat it. They're not banning sardines yeah. and anchovies. And I can tell you there's more people that dislike anchovies than yeah. they dislike foie. I got friends that hate cilantro. They think it tastes like soap, so just don't eat it. Yeah, ban it. Yeah, let's, let's ban let's it. Ban Nobody cilantro. Can... <laughs> Get the fuck it's out inhumane. Here. It tastes like soap. Yeah. Let's ban it. It's insanity to me. Uh, Calm down, man. Yeah. Worry about your shit.
I'll worry about mine. Everything will be all right. I agree with you, man. Yeah. I agree with you. And, and whatever politically, if you do whatever you do, I mean, I, I get it. Um, everybody has their beliefs and reasons, but I wish everybody would just open their brain and realize that, um, of course, things were all done. Like every human being has their bad spell. We all went through high school and party stages. We all were, so, we all were that guy at yeah. one stance. Yeah, you know, and every food has its that production at one stance where there wasn't a rule or law. Yeah. Somebody abused it. Yeah, and therefore you have a crappy version of something, but that doesn't mean it's everything. Yeah, and move on, right? Yeah, yeah, and foie gras is amazing. It's delicious. Torshawn. Uh, whole lobe, um, you know, uh, the mooses, the, you know, uh, I could go on. It's amazing. And I can still eat it in Arizona anytime I want. So you're welcome to come out and hang out. So that just means we have to take the Road show, show to Arizona to do the foie thing. I'll guarantee he's down, dude. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to go do it. Road show, just not until maybe September because it's going to be 120 degrees. Every, although we could try and make him eat it outside in the middle of the summer just to add an extra element. I'll, we'll just put an enclosed tent next to him with an air conditioner so we watch from <laughs> inside of it. That's even better. You Brutal have to sit bad. out there yeah. and eat the most unhealthy thing on the planet. Yeah. Oof. Anyway, all right. So, so let's let's talk about what you what you rep here, just so that we have it on. Uh, to say we had a purpose today. How about that? Yeah, sure. You know, we have to have some sort of purpose. Yeah. Usually, shooting shit's good enough, but today we you have other things. So, what what do you have out here? Um, what do we have? Uh, you uh, fresh yuzu juice. It's a Japanese citrus. Uh, kind of. So, for those of you who don't know, yuzu is a small citrus of Japan, kind of a more tart lemon. Is that a good way to put it? I'm trying to think of a way to break it down for people that don't know what to use. Yeah, no, it's it's a mix between lemon and lime. It's yeah. very, it's a very like if you were to take the essence of citrus. So like, yeah. let's just take you take orange, lemon, lime, grapefruit, and kind of put it all together. You have like this citrus flavor. That's sort of what it is. Smaller in size, lots of seeds, not a lot of juice. A lot of people use it just for the zest because it's such a uh, a vibrant fl a flavor. Very, uh, very, very punchy in your face. And um, we brought the juice today. So we've got Maraguta Shibori, which loosely translates to um, in its nat natural state or first 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 press, just like olives. There's a first press for citrus, so you could do a first press or second press, and it's like extra virgin olive oil. The Margu Maraguta Shibori is the first press yuzu, so it's clean. It's not as bitter, and then you see a second press where it's separated. It's cloud. It's cloudier. Uh, there's more pit. There's the rind, and it's it's got a bitterness to it that a lot of people are used to. This is cleaner, great for cocktails, mix it with uh, gin, using it with uh, crudos, uh, finishing in sauces, using it in place of lemon, and uh, really fun stuff. Then we also have some black garlic items today. We, we have to talk about black it's been, garlic. It's been, the, it's been the theme today, black the, garlic. Black garlic is the theme of the day. Uh, for those of you that don't have black garlic, it is fermented garlic. It's cooked anywhere from, what, three weeks to... Fuck, I've, I've Everybody's heard like got six a different... months, dude. I've heard everything. But I think it all depends on time, temperature, and location like yes. anything else. Yes, but um, you're cooking but... it in a rice cooker or a dehydrator with with uh, humidity involved, and it takes raw garlic to completely black. That's why it's called black garlic. It's black. It's fermented. It has health benefits. Over in Japan, they use it for Alzheimer and dementia patients. And Perfect. we have a black garlic molasses. It's basically just black garlic syrup. And then we have black garlic shoyu, and shoyu is... Japanese soy sauce. It's soy, wheat, water, alcohol, salt, fermented. So what's the difference between shoyu and soy, really? They're pretty much the same, but there's different versions of different countries. Like Chinese have their own version of soy. Um, and then you have your tamari, which is the or, uh, not or, I say organic. No, it's the uh, gluten-free because we've got to be gluten-free. That's the one without wheat because you can do soy sauce without wheat, but then it's not true soy. It's tamari and it's gluten-free, but it's not as delicious. But each country has very near and dear recipes from thousands of years ago. The product we have here today is from the Kyoto Prefecture in Japan. And this is stuff that they've been doing for thousands of years. And they started taking black garlic, mashing it down, and working it into the fermentation process. So, there you go. Black garlic, black garlic, black garlic. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Just black garlic, everything. And for those of you who don't have it, black garlic is super expensive in the grocery stores. Um... You can also make it. Just look it up online. We can explain all about it. And there's there's hundreds, probably different different ways. However, black garlic, honestly, uh, to me, is one of the most unique flavors. Uh, I've been using it for a long time before it was ever before I, even, I didn't even know it was a Japanese thing or whatever yeah. at first. I just I uh, saw it on a list on a produce list and went black garlic and I ordered it along with elephant garlic and realized that I didn't like elephant garlic and I really liked black garlic and that was that was what I knew. You know, I'm on the road a lot. I can't remember the specific chef that told me the story within the last three weeks. My, sure. It's like, I remember telling my cooks to clean out the walk-in, and they saw this garlic and they threw it out because they didn't realize black garlic's actually okay. 
So they threw out, you know, fifty, sixty dollars worth of garlic because hey. they thought it was bad. <laughs> like, well, that, no, whoops, sorry. That, I had a prep cook one time that told me, "Hey, hey, have you the the thing that was on the counter?" And I'm like, "Yeah, my starter, my sourdough starter." He's like, "It stunk. I threw it away." I'm like, hey, <laughs> thanks, bro. I've been working on that for a few months. No, it was perfect. <laughs> just so you know, but it was separated. It was broke. It was broke. I'm like, "Yeah, you got to fix it." But uh, bastards. You know, when it comes to the the molasses. You know, we were tasting it at the show yesterday, and people from Italian cuisine, French cuisine, pizza places were trying this. Dude, this isn't just Japanese. This Bas- is- it's basically um, a molasses that has, and it's more like a syrup. It's more like a sweeter syrup than a molasses. Molasses is super bitter. Yeah. So if you take the bitter out of molasses and put, like, an umami flavor into it, that's what yeah. this is. Yeah, and, and pastry chefs are saying, put it over ice cream. So, yes, this is something with garlic that you can put on ice cream or... Right. Finish the sauce. You know, I did a shrimp shrimp stock, reduced it down as if it were the white wine of a Berblanc, added the black garlic molasses, and then mounted out with the butter, like a Berblanc, Berblanc right. um, technique, and then finished it with a little bit of uh, lemon zest and lemon juice and served that over a grilled sirloin. And yeah, good. Like, holy shit, where do I buy this sauce? Well, the, the black garlic, I mean, you just pour that over a grilled steak and you're good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what, I think that's what was going down yesterday. Maybe. I don't know. They did the molasses on pork belly, and it was delicious. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was really good. Finish the soup, finish the ramen. So, yeah, it's just fun stuff. It's exciting ingredients that I get to introduce people to, and chefs, home cooks, you can add this to your repertoire for your recipes. Yeah. Yeah, repertoire is a very big word for the third segment. I'm just letting you know. I wanted to very show large. off. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that intoxicated. I <laughs> no, made it no, work. No, I made good. it work. We're, yeah. we're working currently. And then you also have a line of show use. You don't have out, obviously, right now, right? Uh, some of them are here. No, you don't have to do that. Like, I, just, I just want to talk about it for a minute. Yeah. Cherry, what's um, up with it? You have a cherry blossom and then and from... Uh, so, so we do Sakura cherry blossom shoyu, which is a white shoyu where we're taking the leaves from the cherry blossom tree and the flowers and we're salting them and we're putting them in the shoyu and you're getting this cherry blossom floral flavor. Really, really fun for this time of year because for those of you who know anything about cherry blossoms, Japan or D.C., this is the time of year to visit because that's when the cherry blossoms... Bloom. It's, it's a huge festival. It's huge. huge. It's like, and, and for all of you guys have seen like the, the old coats that have like the cherry, the, that thing on them with the little cherry things, those are cherry blossoms all over, all the umbrellas. Yeah. It's like a huge celebrated thing. Yeah. And you know, you grow up in Baltimore and then you move around on the other places of the country. Like I've never been to DC and like, wow, I used to go every year in April and it is stunning to walk the mall where the monuments are and it's just cherry blossom trees everywhere. And they, they have one in Pasadena. Oh, they do? They have a cherry blossom festival in Pasadena. Oh, shit. Right yeah, I don't think there's any cherry blossoms there, but they celebrate the hell out of it. <laughs> they party in a parking lot with the best of them. We don't have sure. them, but we're here to party anyway. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they have the umbrellas and the jackets and yeah. no other things. But, yeah. but no, there's. I mean, it's a huge festival, and then awesome. this thing really sub- celebrates that, and it's not here yet. Like, there's nobody no. eating cherry blossoms here. It's like, I think they all get consumed somewhere else or something, but uh, the flavor in that thing's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, over hamachi, forget about it, crudo. Hamachi, raw, raw fish. You know, sliced up with some citrus, some local citrus, and <laughs> <laughs> otherwise knows what's in this bottle. For yeah, Japan. right. Yeah, right. That's your local citrus that's uh, good with it. But I mean, we—it's amazing stuff. I mean, pastry chefs are starting to ask for, can you do cherry blossom extract? So people are starting to understand that it can be consumed in food, and it's not just some tree that looks really pretty for a few weeks. You know, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, people are talking about like cherry blossom ice cream. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it sounds great. Why not? That's like sour cherry coming back. I just said uh, there's a Greek spot that I'm working with right now. Who's uh, it's, they're awesome. They're out of Downey, and he does uh, sour cherries on frozen yogurt that he makes, and nice. it is stupid good. good. Hell yeah! And it's a Greek sour cherry that makes everything that we look like, like Luxardos and everything else, look just silly. Awesome. Looks silly. Yeah. Luxardos are just like you know glorified. They're really good. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but they're glorified maraschinos. Yeah. And they're not sour in texture. They're not diversified. They're just sweet cherries mm-hmm. that are good for cocktails. You put booze in them. You know, same with the Amarinis. And I had that for breathing the other night. And I was like, oh, that's okay. But it's nothing like the sour cherry cooked, fermented, like. Oh, delicious. Donk. Yeah. And over ice cream. It, yeah. With the worst case scenario, which is bomb. Yeah. Or even making a compo with some cheese. Yeah. Well. Hard cherries. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. Good. Oh, stunning. So it's not, it's not out here yet. And I think the cherry blossoms, I, I think that that's, uh, I hope it, I hope all those things make their way out. Dude. I think seasonal would be fine, right? Chefs are always questing for cool new things to impress diners with. And as long as foodies exist. Ooh, what's this? It's we'll keep pushing the envelope. 
And a lot of the items that we're doing at Wa Imports are pushing the envelope. We're, you know, we've got Sudachi juice, which is a Sudachi lime from Japan. Um, there's Budahan puree we're getting ready to launch, right? So we're going to keep pushing the envelope. So Budahan, explain that for a second, because nobody, I, if you guys are just listening, you're not a, in the chef world, Budahans are crazy. So it's this yellow citrus with no juice. It just looks like this hand of these yellow fingers sticking out. Yeah, like up. the Grinch hand. Yeah. But yellow. It looks like a, yeah, it's a good a Grinch hand. Right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And it's just the pith, and most people just zest it. Right. They're awesome, because you can, if you're using mostly zest, it's cool because you get 10 times out of that you would a lemon. Yeah. yeah. And you're in the same ballpark. Yeah. However, there's nothing good inside. With a lemon, you can put in a cocktail or whatever. When you cut into a Buddha hand, it's just more funk. It's the, yeah, it's the white it's the white shit you don't eat in a lemon all the way to the core pretty much. Yeah, exactly. I haven't tried it yet, but what we're doing is we're taking fruits from the Pacific Rim. So Thailand, uh, California, Japan, Drawing a blank, China. Uh, so China the Pacific uh, Rim. Pacific Rim. <laughs> Woo! Get a map, guys. Yeah. Google it while we're looking at you. See what but I'm anyway, about. we're taking these twenty-two different fruits, and we're doing purees where there's no preservatives added. It's just fruit and water, and occasionally some cane sugar for some bricks, which is the sweetness level right. to balance out. Because not all fruit is the same all year round. But if you want the puree, it'll come frozen and it'll be consistent because of the bricks. But anyway, the Budahan is really, really fun. That means it'll be local, right? Yeah, it'll be local. Perfect. Yeah. Anyway, the Budahan is actually Northern California. That was the first time yeah, I, ever totally. I ever discovered it was in Calistoga. It had to be some like hippie yeah. dude that fucked up and went, what do we do? Oh, shit. And I'm yeah. like, dude, we could zest it. Yeah. And somebody, a bunch of chefs went, yeah. And then they figured out that their fuck up wasn't so bad. But so that far, had to be it. So far, anything this, this company's launched has not disappointed flavor-wise. So I'm really excited to see what it looks like when we go live with this product. And um, I, I think it's going to change the game, man. Because people are brewing beers with citrus. Well, people love sour and that wasn't a real thing before right yeah I mean, and and uh originally people started associating sour with sour candy and that is not sour that is not, i mean that's that's a sweet sour but sour and bitter are not the same thing yeah they're different. you know bitter bitter beer face bitter coffee bitter that real bitter is not sour and i think that everybody gets it confused yeah and that that buddha handle probably be the first thing that comes out that's truly like a bitter fruit yeah because nobody, nobody changes that, right? Nobody goes for it right now, right? No. Preserve lemons. Preserve lemons are salty, bitter fruit. Yep. Um, but that's yet a different format. You're not going to get any dessert quality out of that. It just goes back to the demand. People are going to start hearing about Buddha Hand. They're going to listen to this podcast, see it on a menu, see it in a cocktail. I'm like, hmm, what is that? There's a Buddha Hand infused gin already out there. You think they'll have to change the name because of political things? It can't be a Buddha Hand anymore. It'll have to be like, I don't know. I hope not. Somebody will get mad. More people policing other people. Some, some monk is going like, to be just pissed. calm down, everybody. Calm down. Like, it's all good. <laughs> we don't even know why it's called a Buddha hand. I, like, what are they mad about? I have no idea, but it, look it up, folks. It's it's cool. Really, really crazy looking. Super delicious. And what, what else What else, What else? else besides, I mean, obviously your stuff is cool, but what else have you guys seen out there, man, in, in your track as far as like the, the people are trying to push for food-wise that literally you couldn't get without somebody else manufacturing it? Like, I, I, think, I think cheese is one of them. Yeah. You really want good cheese. Go out and explore where cheese has been made. Look at Cowgirl Creamery. Look at Rogue. Look at um, look at Creek, man. There's there's a million of them out here. Yeah, and uh, and you know, for everybody that appreciates it, we meet chefs that say, "Oh, I make my own." I said, "That's awesome." These people dedicate their life to it, though. You're trying to right. work that into your day when you're worried about your truck delivery and your cook showing up and your volume of cover counts and is it the right temperature. But, I mean, you know, the, the vinegar line, minus eight, stuff's amazing. Uh, Salumi, Fermani, Olympia Provisions. I mean, uh, Elias Cairo is doing some stunning, yeah. stunning salumi. Olympia Provision is probably one of the coolest things I've tried in a few years. Yeah. Um, and the best part about that is how I got introduced to it is uh, the gentleman that was working in the warehouse, who's an awesome dude, uh, was like, hey, man, we have some that are going bad. If you want to try any, it has an expiration date. And on it, I was like, hey, there's this Olympia. And I didn't know who they were. Yeah. So there's Olympia provision stuff on here. He goes, yeah, man, but it's all like green. It's not good. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it must be horrible. It's green mold on the outside, right? And so that Friday after, and I was like, oh, I don't want any. I don't want, I don't want to try it. It's green. He was like, oh, it smells. Knowing that it's mold, I'm like, well, it's probably just mold, but I don't know. So that Friday when we went out, it was Elias that was down. And I go out with a, another rep. And uh, the first thing he said was, we use this uh, really organic green mold on the outside and how we <laughs> how we do it and if you smell it it's totally earthy whatever i was like fuck i just passed on like two cases of that oh shit off man because it was green and bad and i was like shit what happened dude but and honestly now i eat it and it is strong don't get me wrong it's mm -hmm. it, if you don't like funk maybe not your thing it's not for but everybody I, but i love funk and and it's it is made with the only green and he, he enlightened me about all kinds of stuff like the 
the white on the outside of the salami, how it's powdered instead of mostly mold, and now yeah. they got the white wrapping that's fake and blah blah blah. His I, is I all know. his is all natural casing, so you can eat the casing. He spent seven years in Italy training with master charcuterie makers. Yeah, and he and he's also the lowest um, cured meat, I believe, in America. So he's only curing it for the least amount of time. Really, I think it's twenty seven days for something, twenty two days, and then out the door. He might be rivaling angels, but that's because they're doing game. Angels is doing amazing stuff too. Angels is great. No, wild, I love, I love wild it too. boar, elk, venison. His black truffle just won an award in France. Really? He's, he went. I mean, obviously Pascal that that runs that company's from France, but well, he lives lives in Carlsbad, California. Went to France and kicked the crap out of everybody in France with the best black truffle salami. That's kind of cool. The, the best part is he probably imported the black truffles, made it out here, and then took them back then. Yeah. No, he did. He, they, he said everybody was scratching their <laughs> I don't know if I call that up. genius or stupid. I don't know what that is. but <laughs> He was definitely thumbing his nose at his, uh, partners, well, his partners in crime we'll over We'll call it tasty in the long run. Yeah, but. this stuff's amazing, man. So, and, and yeah, yeah, you could make your own uh, Luca Nica from Olympia Provisions, or you can make your own but black truffles. But it's not as good, no, man. man. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's just not as good. Dedicate their life to this, man. You could also raise your own cow out back. Yeah, and you could slaughter that thing and get two New Yorks out yeah. of it that'll never make your restaurant happy. Yeah, but why would you do that? It's silly. So then, why would you make your own salami? Yeah, there was a guy who I just saw the other day too, the uh, chef that's opening a new spot. I won't mention any names because I don't want anybody to. Uh, well, I actually don't care what they do, but I just won't mention any names because I don't want to do it. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh, he said he was making his own charcuterie, and the fridge was uh, two and a half feet by three and a half feet that he was using. That was like you know it was a curing gang, and I was like, man, I go through more of that. I go through more than that in a week. Good luck. There's no way you're going to make enough of anything. People are like, I'm going to make my own guanciale. Why? Why? Where are you going to put that? What happens if the health department shows up? Did you do your HACCP plan? You know, people don't realize, by the way, all the paperwork and certifications the chefs have to go through to make sure the food's safe. And you're like, unless you lie. Unless you lie, which ha never happens in the hospital. <laughs> ever happens in the hospital. Which is, by the way, what everything happens in the hospital. <laughs> and any chef's like, oh, I don't do that. You're like, what? no, dude. If you walk into something labeled like fresh, and has a date for tomorrow, that means they just wrote it on there today to make it up. I There's still remember no. a GM at one of my restaurants when a health inspector showed up, horrified look on his face, like made these like motions to me for me to distract her, grabbed the vacuum machine, picked it up and ran it out the back of the restaurant before she could turn around and see it was in the restaurant because, you know, vacuum sealers, you get to, you got to do the plan. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. vacuum sealers and sous vide. Yeah. We used to just always have the sous vides running when the health department, when, when we, we knew they were there, we would take out the sous vide, ice bath everything. When they walked around, it would just be like, oh, we're icing all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just went in. It just went in. Just we're, went icing, in. Yeah, we're icing it. Don't worry about it. It's cooling off. That's awesome. As soon as they left, we put the sous vide back in, didn't even take the ice out and move on. Yeah. Got it heat back up. Yeah. But, I mean, people dedicate their lives to making this stuff. And, like, support them. It's small business. Just like you want people to come eat at your restaurant, support the little guys. Yeah, I wish I, wish I would have known that years ago. Yeah. I mean, that really is one thing that now I'm telling you. I wish yeah. that... I wish that somebody would have grabbed me and said, hey, bro, there's no way you're going to make it better than that dude. Yeah. You may like it differently. Yeah. So you may make it different, but you're never going to make it consistent or be able to do that or be able to even touch what they do for a living unless you dedicate the time yeah. and the facility and the way they do it like they do. I'm going to say 10,000 hours or more to be a professional pro at what you do. We got that down in a few years. The chef's working crazy hours. Well, they got that down as working their farms and making their charcuterie or making yeah. their cheese. They figured it out, man. Like, let them do what they... But I was the same way. It took me leaving the kitchen to realize, wait a second, that was my ego blocking me right. getting the best stuff because I was like, oh, we could do it ourselves. We'll make our own ricotta. No, it was garbage. Or it was you, garbage. You walk away because somebody has a question or somebody cut a finger and all of a sudden you left the, you know, the milk curdling for too long and it's all fucked up. You're like, oh shit, now I got to start over. Well, you just cost time and money. And you got to start over when you can just buy an amazing ricotta from, you know, Bellwether. Why yeah, not? And just you know? write it on your menu. Give them props. Yeah. It's an amazing Bellwether ricotta. Yeah. Great the stuff. little ricotta in the cone, dude. Yeah. Like, Eat it up. It's good. Yeah. Like, oh, I got to make all my stuff? No. You're, 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 I mean, great. But you're also, you know, working way more hours than you need to. So. I think, I think that that, I think they should teach that in a culinary class. Yeah. I mean, just for all you guys out there. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to hear because you want to make everything the best. We went to a spot today that's like tasting things we have and saying, oh, look, we're making our own, and that's cool and all, but that's going to be gone when, and then how long did it take you to make it, and do you know exactly how to make it again? Are you bottling it? Probably not. Uh, I, you know, do you have the right means to do it? No, you're just playing. And playing's cool. Yeah. Playing's cool, but it's, that doesn't mean it's best. And at the end of the day, you're winding up uh, experimenting on your guest. Why, why would you do that when you can get something consistent from a reliable source? I mean, every once in a while experimenting, yeah, but 
what what if you take a day off and somebody forgets to check that thing in the walk-in? Remember Anthony Bourdain's book where he talks about... Uh, I was just going to tell you, I started listening to No Reservations again yeah. uh, about a week ago when I was driving around and I got to this six. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, everything he says now, I look at it in a different way. Because uh, yeah. now I'm looking at it from where he wrote it. Yeah. And it's just, he's right. The pastry chef calls and says, feed the beast, feed the beast, feed to the starter. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But like, what if you forgot to make that phone call? You're screwed. You know, yeah, like, forever. So your your yours got thrown in the trash because it smelled funny. It smelled funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, no, just give it more food. What's how many fun? how many hours? And, and you know, we forget to apply cost to the chef hours. Yeah, we're on a salary and we work all the time. Like, count that up. How much time did you just spend? And what did that actually cost? And what could you have done instead? You know, like take a day off, hang out with your significant other, hang out with your children. So we get so so obsessed with our egos of like, oh, I got to make it all myself. No, no, you don't. You can get it from Wild Imports, Lord Chanel. It's good stuff, man. And <laughs> they're they're doing an amazing job. And let's support them just like they support us. And everybody wins together, right? Two hundred percent, man. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, thank you very much for uh, hanging out, man. The, oh, yeah. the pool has been wonderful, Tony. You're an overachiever today, dude, especially Tony's in this a rock last star. bit, dude. You've like saved our ass numerous times from dying from the umbrella. So I really appreciate you more thank now. Thank you so much, than man. Even I did before. You know, and not only that, but you always have the best haircut in the room. It's yeah. really what it comes down this, to. This is a blast, man. We get to sit around and talk about food and talk about chef and all that kind of fun stuff. We will do it again, yeah, my friend. Thank you for having me. For all, of, for, for all of you who are back, check out Wall Imports. Uh, listen to what you said. If you have any comments, please, please, please uh, let everybody know. Let us know. If you want to hear this something, tell something. Want our opinion. Tell us to fuck off. Whatever you want to do, we want to hear it. Uh, whether we respond or not, that's up to us. But we want to hear it all. Uh, you can also follow us at... Uh, fat drunk and happy on Instagram, Chef Cody Stortz uh, on whatever platform you like, and of course uh, Cody Stortz podcast on pretty much everything now. Thanks to the likes of Tony, uh, we're on every major uh, podcast network. Uh, also, tell them hello, share, listen to other podcasts, and then uh, Brian, where can they find you at? Okay, uh, Instagram at Chef B Freeze, and then if you want to email me and rant at me, you can either hit me at Chef Brian B R Y O N F R E E Z E at Gmail. Or you can hit me at B R Y O N at WA Imports, W A Imports dot com. And yeah. rant and say I'm wrong or, you know, tell me I'm an idiot, whatever. Yeah, I'm into that, dude. Yeah. I like being dumb. Yeah. It's the best thing I do right. Yeah. What can I say? Hell yeah. Thank you guys very much. You Thank guys have you. a wonderful day. Uh, and peace. peace.